I think you can see now the GitHub repo from my yeah. Captain Report utility. Awesome. Um, so I created or when we are running Captain evaluations in a CI/CD pipeline and the SLO evaluation is part of your uh, acceptance criteria of your user story, then you want to save um, yeah, the results as yeah, like a PDF or something like this. So you can add it to your documentation when you're re uh, releasing your software. And um, right now we can only take a look in the bridge and see there's the, the, the results as a graph or as a chart. And that's why I'm, yeah, I'm written this little Go utility, um, the Captain Report Creator, um, which is basically taking all the, um, the data from the um, evaluation done event and is parsing the data and creates a little chart and um, yeah, it's writing PDF out of it. So, um, oh, give me a second, go back. Oops. And it's already in the Captain Sandbox. So you can, can um, see it here, you can use it. Um, I already compiled one release for it. And yeah, what it's doing, as I said, you can just directly use your, um, your curl output when you ask the captain API for the evaluation done event and you're getting your result back, you can pipe it directly in the captain report binary, um, defining an output. And yeah, it will create these chart with my project stage, uh, the overall test result uh, when it was running and as well all the uh, test criteria which were evaluated. That's pretty cool. Uh, is there anything uh, needed from uh, the, the developer to like uh, some additional API calls or is everything that's needed in this one cloud event and you, you will uh, parse the cloud event? And you yeah, it's, it's it? everything within the cloud event, within the, um, the data which um, the Captain API is giving back when it's saying here the evaluation is done. So I have here my indicator results, like uh, yeah, if the overall evaluation was passed, and I have here my acceptance criteria, and then I have as well all the previous evaluations, the evaluation history, so I can use this data points to um, create my graph. So I can see over the time, how was my, was my service performing, and yeah, edit to my, to my uh, chart here. Which is, uh, thanks Christian, this is Andy. Um, I think in, we had a, a sprint review meeting today and I made the point that we need a better API to get these, this data in a single call, but I, I guess I was wrong because this can already, all of this can already be retrieved. Um, is there anything missing in that API call to retrieve data uh, that you wanna display? Uh, do you need some extra, filters on number of results or something like that or um so so actually the number of results i can yeah it's it's uh, i can count on within my within my program i'm not really sure but i, I think that the text should be passed um as well right do you mean the labels you mean the uh, labels, labels yeah. yeah the labels yeah yeah, that would be, that would obviously be beneficial. Then you have all the details. Yeah, so, this would be, uh -huh. but let me scroll down the, the event. It's a little bit longer, this file. Yeah. If we already have the label, oh yeah, no, only the evaluation done label. label. Yeah. Okay. Because this is, this is a really, it's really great to see that this is kind of already possible because we have received a lot of people asking about how can we, uh, create visualization of the captain results in other tools like uh, Jenkins, right? They want to have uh, the heat map visualization, something like this. So if the API already delivers that data, then that's great. The only, as I said, I, I, I think we just need to figure out if there, need, if there needs to be additional filter criteria for the API so it doesn't return everything, but you can, you can filter it down to the number of runs or things that have a certain 
result. But other than that, this is really cool that this is really possible. So it could be, of course, it could be a little bit, let's say you have a service where you have a lot of evaluation details, then the response JSON or the, the response cloud event could be a little bit uh, uh, getting huge over the time. Mm -hmm. So perhaps this would be, yeah, let's, in, in this case, I, I only have, a, yeah, let's say uh, 26 um, evaluation history um, data points. But when you're having thousands, then yeah. I, I guess it will be a little bit, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Too, too big the, the um, response. And if you have there the ability to say, okay, I would only want to take a look in my last 10 mm -hmm. evaluation details then, or evaluation history, this would be beneficial, right? Mm -hmm. And I have to, as well, I have to um, uh, um, give a big shout out to Johannes because um, I have to say I'm not so familiar with Go and um, I'm not a developer as well, but um, he was always kindful to, to answer my stupid beginner's questions. No so problem. you're welcome. Thank you, Johannes. And I, I would yeah. have a question. Uh, how did you do the plotting? So the charting itself, is there a library behind yeah. that you can show us? So, um, Let's go here. So I'm using the Go PDF um, for the PDF rendering and Go chart, which, yeah, I, I was just Googling um, charting uh, Golang and this was the chart or the um, open. This was basically, um, the library the most people were using, but I don't know, perhaps there is some better charting library or so, but um, this was for me at least the, the easiest way to, to get these up and running. And um, here are some examples of the chart. So it isn't, I have to say, it's, it's not so beautiful, my report, but it's working. I have all the information that I need. I have a little chart, you know, for uh, management. Huh? The chart is always good. And um, yeah, so I'm using this charting library um, from, uh, I cannot pronounce the name, sorry. And the Go PDF library. And yeah, then I have my, my structure here, which yeah, it's, it's, for me, it was a, a really huge learning curve to get all the yeah, stuff up and running and, and uh, writing Golang. And so, um, I'm used the um, this little utility here to get my structure up and running. So I just pasted or copied my my JSON data over, and then I have my auto-generated structure, which I can then use in my program. That's pretty cool. That's a, that's a handy tool. So uh, I would have a question uh, since you mentioned uh, that you're not so much familiar with Go, but uh, even though you took the challenge to, to start with Go, yeah. um, you just wanted to, to get your hands uh, directly on Go or was there any other reason why you used Go? Um, for um, basically, I just want to have a single binary which I can use. I, I'm more familiar like uh, with, with uh, scripting languages like Python or so. But in this case, I want to have really a small uh, a single single binary for my for my pipeline, which I can use instead of using an, 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 a Python Docker image for my for my pipeline or installing any uh, pip dependencies and so on. So that's the reason why I've, I've written this in Go. And after yeah, after the last developer meeting here from the Captain community, where Christian was showing how to write Go um, uh, Captain services. It was, um, and I have a lot of time right now, thanks to uh, the pandemic. Um, I was yeah, thinking by myself, oh, let's, let's try Go. That's the only reason behind. Yeah, that's, uh, but that's pretty cool what you have came up with. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm actually thinking if uh, this is something we can integrate in Captain's Bridge, uh, maybe not as a binary, but uh, maybe the PDF generation. 
uh, when you maybe uh, like the future of Captain's Bridge uh, could look completely different, obviously. But when you can eventually click uh, generate me a chart for my service, and then you just get the PDF downloaded to your computer, could be something that we can integrate. Uh, yeah, I, I already had a discussion with uh, uh, Andreas about it. But I then uh, said to him, okay, just focus to something different, something more useful for, for, for Captain. And that's why I've made it by my own. So, um, but in fact, but I would more prefer to have these, if it's one time um, implemented into Captain directly into core, um, I would more like it to have it via an API call. So I can call the, the captain's API, hey, give me, give me the chart or give me a report. Because yeah. this was inspired by the captain's bridge, the, the whole report concept, which I've done right now, because I've seen the, the nice charts you have done in the, in the captain's bridge and I want to visualize it like the bridge as well. So. Yeah, I think it makes total sense to also have it as a, a PDF, uh, as, as you said, uh, maybe with an API call or as, um, uh, as also Christian mentioned with the, with the download button. Um, so we see it's totally working uh, and it's, uh, it, it's possible with your, uh, with your Go, Go uh, binary. Um, so can we just uh, take a look where you actually create the chart? Yeah, so as I said, I, I have here my sample data. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just running a cut on the sample data, pipe it over to my captain report binary. You can still see my screen, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes. And, um, yeah, say, say report PDF. Then it's already here. And that's it. So cool. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So we have the ability, and this was also something I, I want to achieve, um, or not want to achieve. I was playing around with 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 Go, and um, I like these uh, piping stuff in, in under Linux, and that was the reason why I'm adding here also the ability to pipe it over to your binary, not only as command line argument so you can also say hey this is my JSON file so if you have asked the, the captain's API for the for the um, evaluation done event and want to do something different uh, um, like uh, parsing your CI CD and and trying or making something different with a with a file so you can also say hey um, take this file directly from from your local folder or so Yeah, actually, we, all, we also got another suggestion from the community uh, that you have a dedicated URL, if, if I get it uh, correct, to get a dedicated URL. Or actually, I can, uh, uh, I can promote the, um, the folks that uh, was uh, asking these questions. Uh, so, uh, Rob, um, if you want, you can uh, actually now ask the question uh, yourself. I just uh, unmuted you. Sure. I was just thinking, um, because we are putting um, Dynatrace events, right, that have like a deep link now to the, to the, the bridge, um, you could also maybe have a page that renders the whole report in a nice report that could be a URL. And then that same URL, so if you were to use like a Jenkins pipeline, the Jenkins pipeline could have the deep link to the report, you know. I'm just, I just don't know if making a PDF file is easy to, to try to move around different tooling where, where a URL might be easier. So, so I was using the PDF actually for the reason, what if, let's say I, I deploy a new Kubernetes cluster and I don't have the data from my, my old captain installation anymore. That was the reason behind I want to have it in a PDF report, which I can then add to my documentation. But um, as yeah, long as I, captains... Yeah, I don't think it's an either or. I think, yeah, your yeah. use case makes total sense. I could see it like, you know, certain people need to have an audit of like in an artifactory kind of thing to to say this is a build build artifact, right? So I could totally see a PDF yeah. for that 
Um, yeah. But now with the, with the deep links, this is as well a great possibility to to just have the deep link with the CI CD pipeline to click on it and see the, the evaluation report in, in the bridge. Right, it just, it just makes it a little like less, I mean, a little more accessible because right, someone can navigate into the bridge and find it. But if it's like, all right, here, maybe it's just almost like a zoom in of, of that report, like boom, right, just open the page right to it. Yep. Just an idea. So, uh, and what I can see here on the, uh, on the screen is basically that the, the whole program is only like a, maybe like 400 lines of code and it's and that's it it, it, does, it yeah. didn't need any, any, any more or did it no that's it and and um, I would say 100 lines of code is only the structure what was auto generated so um, yeah and as I said it's it's ugly code but um, yeah, no, but I, I think it's great, Christian. I mean, I, I too have wanted to tackle this. I and mean, uh, just, um, and I know a lot of your code here is probably just the chart rendering. So if it was something simpler, uh, it probably would even be less code. Yeah, so so um, you can see here, um, let's say I'm, I'm doing some stuff like adding the, the captain's logo as well as base 40, 46 um, encoded string. And then um, getting the data out of um, the, the events is just these couple lines. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, looping through simulation history. If I have any indicator results, then I'm appending my, my time values to my uh, variable or to my array here. And then I'm looping over the indicator results and um, appending them to my uh, chart value map, which I've created. And that's it and then i'm just yeah it's it's um heavily uh, um what it's a uh, website um stack overflow copy and paste so um i'm creating here my chart and then i'm looping over my chart results here um appending it as time series so i have these lines and yeah then i'm adding this image or these rendered chart as an as an uh, buffer, if, um, a byte buffer. And then I'm, yeah, the, the PDF itself, this is not so really nice, the library, but yeah, it's working. So I'm just yeah, printing out all the stuff. As you can see, I'm setting here, if an, the, the evaluation was passed, it will be displayed in green. And if it's not passed, it's red. And then I'm looping over the, um, the indicator results to to um, also print out the the test criteria, and then in the end, I'm adding the um, captain logo. I'm adding the chart to my PDF, and then save the PDF. That's that's it. And yeah, I I know I, perhaps I can or I could um, move some things out to other functions and so, but it's working. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And uh, since you already contributed it to the Captain Sandbox, uh, it's now also available for others. And uh, if someone feels to uh, the urge to kind of uh, improve the code or uh, take a look at it or maybe add more functionality, um, I would assume they are uh, like, uh, they can just go ahead and open maybe a, a pull request to your code and then you will review it. And uh, yeah, you others can contribute and make it even more. Yeah. Um, making it more use cases. Um, absolutely, absolutely. I, I think uh, that that's pretty cool. Thank you so much, uh, Christian, for for presenting this. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Actually, I just want to highlight again that um, these kind of uh, community contributions they live on GitHub.com/slash/captain-sandbox. So we have uh, created a, a dedicated repository or uh, organization where um, things like Christian's, um, int not integration, but like uh, tooling uh, is, is, is living. Uh, we have uh, other services that integrate with Captain, uh, living in the Captain Sandbox. So it's kind of the starting point 
um, for new captain integrations and new tools around captain. Um, and with this, I'm handing over to the other Christian in this meeting, uh, because uh, I think he's also mentioning maybe uh, where, what is the best starting point for, um, for the captain sandbox, because we've also uh, made sure that we have uh, a tutorial uh, yeah, uh, here for you. So uh, I'm sorry if, I, if I'm uh, maybe changing the agenda here, uh, but uh, maybe uh, we can start with uh, showing uh, where to start if you want to start a new integration, and then uh, yeah. it's all yours for explaining uh, or kind of uh, talking a little bit about the, the highlights of the, of the latest sprint of Captain. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, let's start with that. We do have the Captain Sandbox organization. There is also a quick contribution guide um, that you should go through. This is more about how you contribute something to Captain Sandbox. So this is more like a process. Uh, but if you're just interested in writing your own service for trying things out or for investigating, we have our service template. Um, which is currently available in Go, which uh, has been presented in the last community meeting. So if you're interested, interested in that, uh, just look it up in the last uh, community meeting on YouTube. Uh, just to go through it, we did have some changes the last couple of days because we had to migrate some uh, libraries, etc. cetera. Uh, but this is now pretty much in the final state. Uh, and it has a quick readme that you can go through if you just want to try it out. Um, then the next thing for you to know is if you want to contribute to Captain directly, maybe instead of just contributing to Captain Sandbox, this is also a possibility and we're inviting everybody into that. Uh, the first thing to look at is the Captain Captain repository where there is a contribution guide. Uh, it's called contributing.markdown. And it has some information, uh, where to start, read the docs, tell us that you're working on an issue, um, some information about coding style features that we're using. So that might also be interesting for people that use the Captain Service template written in Golang. There's a review dog and code coverage.io that you can use to monitor and improve your code coverage as well as your coding style. In addition to that, we have some links. For instance, uh, we have a link to the issue tracker here. Uh, I believe we also have a good first issue link somewhere. I'm not sure where, but it's quite easy to, to find good first issues by just clicking on issues here and selecting the label it's called good first issue. Uh, we have some issues that we track by labeling them with good first issue. If you have any questions uh, because you want to do them or something, just post in the, in the issue itself the question that you have or contact us via our Slack channel. Some of them you might find are not good as a first issue because they might be a little bit more complicated or maybe you're missing some information. If that's the case, obviously just go to the next one or ask us again. All right, uh, so much about contributing. Should we go over the other topic as well? Yeah, that would be, would be great. Good. Um, so while there is good first issues, obviously, right there, we also have the issues that uh, are not that good to start working with. Uh, so issues for more experienced developers. Obviously, you're all welcome to join and uh, collaborate with us on these issues. And to do that, we are having a Kanban board. Uh, we're calling it Sprint. Uh, in, in reality, it's more like a Kanban style, but we try to organize ourselves in a Sprint. And the sprint currently has 18 tickets or 18 issues on done uh, and uh, 16 on to do. Uh, that's uh, quite simple to explain because uh, today was our sprint review. So we have reviewed all those tickets and we've closed them. I will go over some of them. I'll provide some highlights. And we also had our sprint planning where we already uh, defined the next two weeks that we're working on uh, with the issues that are in the to do column. So uh, just to go over some highlights, I'm not going to read them one by one. I'm just going to go over some highlights that I've written down. Uh, one thing that we did in this sprint was to refactor the Go Utils library. Essentially, uh, this library was uh, really, really big. It grew over time and there was a lot of dependencies. And it's very nice to see why the Go modules files that this is the dependencies it has now. So some open API or Swagger. Um, dependencies here, cloud events, obviously, Google UUID, WebSockets, and some other dependencies that are yeah 
they just are needed. And if you look at uh, the release 061 branch, so that was the last release that we published, this list just grows. <laughs> and there was a lot of dependencies that we just inherited via indirect dependencies and other stuff. And it's, it was really annoying for, for one because uh, there were incompatible dependencies sometimes with our services. Plus, we also had issues uh, with the size that the binaries uh, had when we built uh, anything with these dependencies. So we did some refactoring. We have a new uh, package for our CLI uh, that's not in Go Utils now, it's somewhere else. And this just helps us for the refactoring. And also the library has been restructured a little bit. So there's like an API part where we have models and utils for API. And there is a lib part which is essentially used for writing your own captain integrations. So for instance, this would be the part that the template repository that we've built is, is primarily using. All right, uh, another thing that we did is a huge step forward uh, for our API. So uh, I actually have to find the issue here because there is some nice screen that I want to show. There we go. So until 061, the API was, uh, well, it was a microservice, but in reality, it wasn't so micro. It did a lot of stuff and it did a lot of forwarding of, of uh, HTTP requests. And that's actually stuff that's much better suited for a web server instead of a Go microservice. So uh, we did some refactoring and I think I will zoom in here. And uh, just to give you a high level uh, architecture of what is going on, this is uh, where the actual API lives. So this is our API that we provide publicly. And this is what, what it was before. And uh, essentially, we had an to ingress gateway via a load balancer or a node board, which went to a virtual service, which went to the API. And uh, then the API was distributing the API calls uh, to the microservices. This is suboptimal because this is a small component. It's a microservice and it shouldn't do such a heavy task. Hence, we've introduced an Nginx gateway or Nginx proxy server in between that is now distributing the calls to the API component and to other microservices, for instance, the configuration service. Uh, this is not something that uh, Christian Heckelmann will probably start. Uh, well, he's probably going to like it <laughs> because uh, I will actually just show you what the result is in the Swagger UI of the, of the Captain API. So if you go to the Swagger UI, it's just this URL uh, of, your, of your API endpoint, then you get like only these couple of endpoints now. So you just get the project endpoint and the authentication and some endpoint for posting and retrieving events. And we now have a drop down up here where you can switch to the configuration service, which is now also exposed publicly. Obviously, it's secured via the token. So you always need that uh, X token still. Uh, but this now exposes everything from the configuration service via the URL configuration service v1. So it's the same host, it's the API host, but we have that exposed. And you can now get like a list of projects and get, can get some details for a project. You can also query and post and update the resources for a project. So that's the, the configuration repository essentially that is behind the repository. And you can get some other information for the stages, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Essentially um, for all that endpoints, for all these endpoints we have here, we would have to write uh, something in the API to, to kind of forward them. And we now have a, a setting where we just say, yeah, forward configuration service. So slash configuration service, forward this to the actual configuration service microservice. And we believe with this architecture, we are a lot more scalable than we used to be. And it will be a lot quicker to write new microservice endpoints in the future. Uh, question. All right. Yeah. Uh, sorry for jumping in, but can can you underline the point that uh, those that are uh, writ, um, the endpoints that are not visible or they uh, are visible yeah. but uh, yeah. good point. Right. So uh, uh, are not allowed to use. Yeah. Well, not allowed. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, I don't recommend. Well, we don't recommend using internal endpoints. We've marked them as deprecated. Uh, hence, they're like uh, they have strike through and they're like a little bit uh, invisible, kind of. 
um, but we acknowledge that all these endpoints exist. They are here for internal use. They are here for some other use cases that you might not know or that you might not think about. Uh, I will give you a short example. If you go back to API service, you have this post project endpoint that creates a new project. This is the right point for the captain API on the API service for creating a new project. Uh, if you go to, to the configuration service, you will also find a post project endpoint. So if you just call this endpoint, this is just the post project endpoint of the configuration service. And it might only do some parts of what you think it does because this really only creates the new repository or it fills the repository that you uh, need for creating a project, but nothing else. Uh, if you go to the API service, this endpoint for post project also handles sending out the cloud event uh, for creating a project. It handles setting up the MongoDB data store for the project, etc. So this is basically the endpoint that you should use. And this endpoint is for internal use. And if you actually use it, then uh, you might have a reason to do so, but we really recommend not using it unless you really have to. Uh, there's a couple endpoints like that. Uh, we mark them all as internal. So there shouldn't be an issue if you follow the documentation, then it should be fine. All right, um, other than that, uh, so what, did we, what else did we do in the sprint? There was a lot of bug fixes that we did, uh, smaller quality of life improvements, including Captain's Bridge. Um, there's nothing really that I can show you, I think, because these are all minor details that uh, you might not see or that only happen in edge cases. So for me, Captain's Bridge uh, still looks fine. Uh, but we're planning to release a EAP version, so an early access version, um, I think next week or in two weeks again with the latest changes. I'm pretty sure we will have an announcement in a community meeting again next week. So make sure to come to the community meeting to hear and to see the latest and greatest of Captain's Bridge. Okay, that's it for the sprint review. Um, now on to sprint planning. Basically, as I said already, we have everything in the to-do column of our Kanban board here. Um, we also have a more convenient way of finding the issues that we are doing in this sprint, which is by going by label. And we've started to label all our issues uh, with the current sprint number. So this is sprint 27. And if you take a look, uh, one is already closed. <laughs> Uh, but if you take a look, there's 17 open issues that we have committed as a captain team. We've committed to work on these issues in this sprint. Uh, obviously, if you want to take part in any of these issues, feel free to contact us. Feel free to write into the issue. Or if you have any question or any concerns about one of the issues or some, maybe you have an idea to improve what we do, just write it in the issue. Uh, that's fine. But uh, basically, that's what we said that we want to work on. And one of the key features uh, in this sprint is going to be something that Johannes has teased before. It's exposing Captain's Bridge via the CLI. So uh, what we basically plan is to have like a uh, Captain Configure Bridge minus minus expose, I think it was. And it's not working yet, it's still work in progress, but that would expose your Captain's Bridge and then you could access Captain's Bridge via a public URL like this. Uh, with the caveat, obviously, that you still have to introduce a basic authentication. This is basically configuring a secret in Kubernetes. We will document this, uh, obviously, in our tutorials, but it's quite easy. And uh, I think this is something I also can show. If you have a basic authentication, then, uh, well, it is already authenticated, I guess. Let me switch. So if you have basic authentication, this is what it will look like. It will just ask you for a username and the password and you can configure that. All right, uh, what else are we working on? We are working on the Captain Enhancement proposal number 10, uh, which is also by our beloved contributor, Christian Heckelmann. Um, it basically goes into the same direction that I've already shown with the API. Uh, the API now exposes some endpoints that you can query projects, et cetera. And Christian has also proposed to have like a possibility to get like all projects via the CLI and uh, maybe also get like uh, which services are onboarded already in the project. So some sanity checks uh, in, in reality 
uh, because if you're using the captain CLI already, there is almost no way to directly check if what you did was successful or if what you did was correct. And uh, even for uh, pipeline integrations, it's it's quite nice if you can just check, hey, is my card service already onboarded? If not, onboarded it now. Um, just some, some minor details, but uh, that was the use case or the user story that Christian has uh, told within that cap. And it's a very nice cap. So if you want to read it up and uh, maybe use it as a template for your own cap, then just go to github.com slash captain slash enhancement proposals and look at the pull requests. But yeah, this is something we are working on in this sprint and the next sprint. And last but not least, we're going to be working on some more refactoring tasks uh, because we've identified with the last couple of refactoring tasks, we've identified some other uh, potential where we can use uh, some refactoring to help us maintain our code better. Because right now there are some parts of the code that uh, I wouldn't call them uh, ugly or something like that, but this is how development works. You write code, you copy code, and eventually you end up having a lot of code, <laughs> and then you need to refactor it. And we've identified some good points to do that now, and we are hoping that this is also finished in the next sprint, and it should increase code quality over the next couple of uh, releases by a lot. All right, I think that was it for sprint review and sprint planning. Um, if you're interested in more details about what we're doing in the sprints, uh, obviously come to us via Slack, ask us some questions or obviously, uh, yeah, go via other channels if you have other channels. Yeah, good. Thank you so much, uh, Christian. There was a, there was a lot uh, of information here uh, and I just uh, share my screen again uh, real quick because I also want to uh, point you just uh, to some parts that uh, Christian already mentioned. Uh, so first of all, uh, if you want to get in touch with the whole um, developer team, uh, join us on captain.slack.com. You will also find um, the link, the invitation link on the captain community site, which is also on GitHub. Uh, I'm sure you already know it. It's um, captain.github.com. Uh, oh, sorry, github.com slash captain slash community so you will find all the links there um, we also um, provide you like with the next uh, with the agenda of next service uh, with the next um, meetings uh, and also we will push um, the uh, we will put the youtube links there from the recordings um, then uh, please feel free to follow us also on on twitter our twitter handle is at captain project and what we right now are really promoting and what we are asking you to take uh, part in our survey that we are already, uh, that we right now are, um, uh, that we have published. Uh, it's really only like a five minute effort and uh, it would, uh, yeah, it would, great, would be great for us if you uh, can answer some of those questions. Uh, it's basically about, uh, yeah, how you heard about Captain, how you're using Captain, which platforms you're using Captain on, what, which features are you missing in Captain. Uh, these kind of things so we can make sure to um, provide you the best captain experience uh, for you. Um, yeah, you will also find uh, the, the tweets on this uh, when, when you follow us on Twitter. Um, we are posting quite regularly there. Um, and if you want to contribute, uh, we have our Captain Sandbox project uh, or organization. We also have the Captain Contrib um, organization where we already have some kind of a uh, promoted contributions that are used already in captain installations. And uh, also you can, uh, yeah, we would, we would appreciate if you can star us on GitHub, on our main repository. That's kind of, uh, we can see that uh, the community also likes uh, our project. And uh, yeah, we just appreciate if you give us some feedback here. Um, since we're already uh, hitting the top of the hour, thanks so much everyone for joining. Uh, we got uh, um, most of the questions that I think we got answered in this meeting. Uh, we got uh, great feedback uh, from the community. Um, thanks so much for answering all those questions and uh, for presenting. Thanks to both uh, Christians and uh, also to Johannes for taking the time to present in here. Um, for next week, we are going to have a captain uh, community meeting and then in two weeks again we, we start again with the captain developer meeting where we take a look at some code. So until then we will have this uh, published on YouTube uh, if there are any um, 
if, if you don't like uh, this to be published on YouTube, just let me know. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, see each other in the Slack community. Uh, and uh, yeah, have a nice day. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye.